Hi, this is Hongshu from MotionCircles.com. In today's video, we'll work on this animation in After Effects. I'll show you how to get your project from this to this. Let's get started. First, let's create a composition. 1080 by 1920, click on OK, and go back to Illustrator. This is my crown here. I'm going to use Overlord to push all these shapes inside After Effects. Change the label color to red. Push these circles. Change the label color to yellow. Let's push these shapes in the center here at the bottom. Change the label color to aqua. And then finally, we have these little circles on the side of the crown. Push these one. We can keep them in blue. And that's all the layers we need. If I turn on the transparency, you can see the crown here. Let's create a null object. It's almost at the center of the crown. Maybe put it here. Parent everything to the null object. Go to scale, make it smaller, 80%. Let's animate the position and rotation of the null object. Hit position and rotation. Go forward 15 frames. And this is where the position is when the crown come into the scene. At the beginning, I want the crown to be outside of the screen. And then maybe with a little bit of rotation, it's coming in rotating. After five frames, it's going to do anticipation moving down, tilt it a little bit, and then go forward 20 frames, moving out of the scene. And then the anticipation, I want it to come the other way around here. And then when it's going out, I'm going to go rotate it like this. Okay, that's good. And then right click, easy ease adjust the curves here. Let's do a curve like this at the beginning. And then I'm gonna just adjust this curve here, shooting out. And the middle could be slightly adjusted like this. Let's see the animation here. This rotation is too much. So from 18 degree, I'm gonna change it to maybe nine degree. So it's going to anticipate slightly and then moving out of the way. That's looking good. That's our basic animation for the crown coming into the scene and then going out. Next thing, we need to add black and white gradient color to our crown to make it a black and white gradient overall. To do that, let's go to my first batch, uh, the red label layers. Select the middle one, zoom in, change the gradient fill to from black to white, black to white and then adjust the gradient fill position so that we have from the top is black and then bottom is white. That's looking good. And we need to copy this gradient fill onto all of the rest of my vectors. So just go inside the group content and then copy this gradient fill. Select all the rest of the layers within this red color label group. Search the fill and it's gonna open all the fill property of my other layers. Now I just need to delete the fill and then paste in my gradient fill into the group. You see the second one is pasted. I'm gonna delete the fill, paste in my gradient fill. This one is applied. And now I'm just doing the same thing, repeating it. That's good. And the next thing I wanna do is to apply the gradient fill to this little circle here. Let's go change the fill to a gradient fill color and then from black and white, that's good. And then I'm gonna change the white on the top, black in the bottom. And this is this first circle that we applied already. Let's go inside the content group. Under group one, there's gradient fill, copy that. And then select all the other circles within this yellow label color, search for fill property. It's gonna open all the fill property of my layers. I'm gonna delete all the fill and then paste in my gradient fill under the group one. so that we can apply the same gradient fill on all the circle layers. And now you can see all our circles are gradient color now. That's good. And the next group, let's see what we have here. We have the first one is gonna be our bottom edge here. That's good. So I'm gonna go inside content group and then delete the fill, paste in the gradient fill here. And then I want to adjust my position of the starting and end point of my gradient. I'm gonna have this gradient white on the left and then black on the right. That's good. For that one, I'm gonna copy this gradient fill. The other layer I wanna apply is this like middle area here, this side here. I will just go inside content group and then delete the fill, paste my gradient fill inside. That's good. We have this gradient bend in the center. 
and uh, only these two layers I want to apply the gradient fill to um, for now. And then the rest of the gradient fill is going to go onto the circle here. So I'm going to just do one of them, this one, and then let's go to gradients. We already have a black and white. That's good. And then I'm going to make the top black and then bottom white. Let's go inside the content group one, copy the gradient fill, and then select all the other layers, search for the fill property. I'm going to delete the fill and then paste in my gradient fill under each group one. That's perfect. Now we have a basic setup of our grading crown in black and white. And the next thing we just need to apply the color to the grading crown. To apply the color, let's go to this center vector shape here and then let's search for colorama effects. If I toggle the output cycle, you can see this color right now is mapping onto our gradient black and white color. And the top here is actually on the left hand side is actually mapping it to the white color. And then the right hand side is mapping to the black. So if I turn it off, you can see our black gets on the top and white is in the bottom. Meaning if right hand side is black, this top color, the first one should be yellow. And then the bottom one should be the red. So the order should go from yellow, green, and to blue, to pink, to red. So if I turn it on, it will go from yellow to green, to blue, to pink, to red. So that's exactly it. Just make sure you understand on the right hand side here, this is going from black and then it's going to go clockwise over here all the way to the white color that's going to be mapped to red. And that's how the colorama works. And we need to map our own color. We need to go to our color palette and then drop it in. I'm just going to double click and then sample my color here one by one. We're only using five color instead of six. I'm going to delete one of those. So now we have a colorama like this one here. That's looking great. And now we just need to animate this. To animate this, let's go to input face and then let's animate the face shift. If I change the value here, it's actually toggling or rotating these colors we have from this color wheel. And this is how we animate it. So let's change it to zero for now. I want to line up with my null object. So go over here. I want this point to be zero. And then at the beginning, it could be a one round of rotation. So when the circle is moving up, I'm soling this layer to see it better. When this shape is coming up, the color is going down and then go for a couple frames to align with this keyframe here. At this point, I'm going to change it to negative 180. So there's a little bit anticipation. The crown is going down, so the color is going up. And then the last one would be at this point. So we have a negative one around um, negative 180 degrees. So that's going to be the value. Let's paste in the easing and see the animation here. Before we continue, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. We will publish new content every week. Click the subscribe button to level up your animation skills and get inspired with great animation every week. You can also join our exclusive community to hang out with motion designers to grow together. Check the link in the description below. Now that we have one layer set up, it's very easy now. We just need to copy the colorama effects. Select the colorama, copy it, and then paste it onto all the other shape shapes within this red label color group. And now we should have all the layers here animate it. And then the next thing we need to do is to copy the same colorama effects and paste it onto all these yellow label color group, which is the circle. Let's copy and paste that. And now let's see the animation. We don't need to reanimate the colorama anymore. We just use the exact same colorama to paste onto all these layers, which is super efficient. Now we have animation on the circle now. Now in this group here, we need to add colorama onto two layers. So it's going to be these two layers. I'm going to change the label color to maybe a green color for better visibility. Now we just paste in the colorama at zero second and then paste in the colorama at zero second on this layer here. So let's take a look at 
this one here. We have a glowing gradient edge to our crown, and then we have this middle band here. That's good. And the last thing we want to do is to paste in the colorama to apply to all these little circles on the side. I'm going to select all the circles, go to zero second, paste in the colorama. And then now we have all the circles over here. That's good. Let's see the animation of what we have after we apply colorama effects. I think that looks super cool. And the last thing we need to do is to add some gradient onto the edges so that we can distinguish the 3D shape that we have here. And all we need to do is to go apply color one by one. Let's come to this one and then let's turn on my color palette here. This first here, I want to change it to a gradient color and then let's go to add a gradient. The middle could be this darker purple and then the side could be a lighter purple like this one here. Click on OK and then I'm going to change the gradient angle. to give it a 3D looking effect. And then let's go copy the gradient color that we did for this layer here and paste it onto the bottom layer. I can turn off the color palette now. Just go inside the content group, delete the fill, paste in the gradients. And this thing, I think without adjusting the position, it's already looking pretty cool. And the next thing here, we need to add a little bit of color let me turn on the color palette again, move it up. So for this one, we're going to use a different gradient here. Just let's try a darker purple to a purple and then to this pink color and then to this beige color here. I'm going to have this gradient color here, drag this one all the way out and then drag this one all the way to the left. We have this color that's going on. That's looking good and then the last one would be this little hole here in the bottom and let's go to add a gradient fill color to this and for this one we're gonna just delete the pink only leave the beige at the bottom and then we're gonna adjust the angle so we only have this beige color at the bottom and then the darker purple would be on the inner side so we have a highlight over here at the edge, which is going to work great. And that's how we apply that. I think the darker purple can be even darker over here on this layer. So let me just adjust the purple here, make it really dark. Like that. Yeah, that looks cool. So that completes our color setup of my crown scene here. You can see the crown is very 3D like looking right now. We have a beautiful gradient color. If I play the animation, this is going to be our animation. The crown is coming in, the color is shifting. And now the crown is looking super cool. We just need to add some texture to it. I have a texture file here. We have this texture going on. This is what we're going to apply to the crown. Let's bring this texture into our composition. It's going to fill the whole scene, but we can actually use this preserve underlying transparency to only apply it to the crown right now for now and then we can do a invert of the color and then we're going to do a tint so for the black we're going to map it to the darker purple here and then the white we're going to map it to the yellow so that's going to be our texture and Overall, we're going to change the transparency modes to overlay, and that's going to apply the texture onto our crown. Now the texture is too overpowering, so we're going to change the transparency mode to maybe 30% to make it less obvious. Very subtle texture that's applied onto our crown here. And uh, to complete the animation, I'm just going to drag down my background animation here. I'm just going to go in to drag my backgrounds. Very simple background animation, just some color shifting in the backgrounds, whatever you want to do. I'm using Colorama again over here. And then we're going to also add in some smoke animation like this one here. I'm going to change the color of the smoke a little bit to this like beige color. And this is going to be our smoke coming on 
when we are shooting this crown in the scene and the smoke is very easy to do uh, I basically created this shape animation and then I arranged them differently in different sizes and different position and we're adding an extract effect and also a turbulence displace and that's and also a fast box blur and that's how we create a smoke and now we have the smoke we have this crown scene going on and the last couple of things we want to add is just some adjustment layers let's say this one we're using compound blur by using this fast box blur layer i'm drawing like these three different shapes and i'm using this three different shapes as a blur for the scene whenever the crown is overlapping with my shape layer here it's going to be blurred on the edges so just so we can add some detail to it and then that's going to be the compound blur and then the top layer we're having is a curve just dragging the lightness down a bit and then we're using a deep glow effect to add some glow to the crown and after we set up everything let's take a look at our final animation here there you have it that's all i want to show you today that's it with this video hope you liked it and learned a couple of tips and tricks for our next project don't forget to check out our project file shop for many amazing after effects project files to improve your skills. If you're serious about improving your animation skills and become a professional, check out our Motion Insider membership at motioncircles.com to access our beginner animation courses trusted by 50,000 plus students worldwide. One last thing, don't forget to join our exclusive Discord community to hang out with fellow designers. Stay on top of industry trends and grow together. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.